So the Greenway's here to give us an update on um, what's going on in the Greenway and I'll show you that. Sure. Uh, I'm Jesse Murray. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Greenway Conservancy. Um, and since uh, Nancy Brennan's departure, she was our Executive Director, I'm sort of the Acting Executive Director. And so I wanted to both introduce myself and give a few updates on things that are upcoming. So, um, starting with horticulture, um, this uh, this spring we will be adding um, five to six trees in the North End Park. Um, the the lawns get really well used, um, both by those that love sun, but also by those that love shade, of which there is not a lot there. And so, um, we are looking to add um, some maple trees along the western edge of the lawn. Um, when you go out there, you see that people are, are clustered under the, the small amount of shade there are. So um, by putting them right along the edge, that won't disrupt the, the general use of the lawn, but will add a little bit more shade for those that are looking for it. Um, also, um, turning from horticulture to the maintenance side, um, the Rings Fountain, which uh, of course not in the North End Parks, but so widely used. Um, right now, you may have noticed that there is a construction fence up around it. Um, we are doing a series of repairs. Um, kind of incredibly, that fountain that is now, and many of the things in the Greenway are now um, almost five years old, and a lot of the parks and so on that were used are reaching the end of their useful lifespan, um, unfortunately. Uh, and so that fence is up. For the next two months, um, we will be taking uh, 100,000 pounds worth of pavers, basically taking the top off the fountain, um, so that we can get at the hoses and lights and other things. Um, for example, one of the pipes um, was installed originally with corrosive metal clips to hold it up. Those have all corroded. And so that whole pipe, instead of being elevated off the basin of the fountain, has fallen down. So a bunch of work like that will now will replace um, those rusted away clips with the new stainless steel clips. Um, that's being done by our staff. It shouldn't be, uh, there's gonna be no heavy equipment, so it shouldn't be noisy or particularly disruptive, but um, and the fountain should open uh, on time. We usually open it uh, in later May, and so it shouldn't be disrupted in that way, but if you notice the, the fence, that's what, that's what that is. Um, another fence going up a week from today um, is for the construction of Carousel Park. Um, we, the, the Conservancy has been here to present before about the one-of-a-kind carousel with lobster, cod, um, all sorts of wonderful animals from Boston School of Children's Drawings. Um, that construction project uh, begins about a week from now. We look forward to opening the, um, uh, the new carousel Labor Day weekend. Um, then that is going in on parcel 14. Um, that is you know, where the, the seasonal rental carousel has been, across the street from Daniel Hall. Um, and so for this year, because that will be fenced off, um, the rental carousel for the partial season uh, will not be out there. Um, so we're, we're sad too, but we look forward to another great, uh, you know, to a, a even better carousel um, coming soon. Um, then uh, still on the idea of improvements, we recently had a proposal for um, a photo installation along the fence of Parcel 12. Parcel 12 is a ramp parcel just north of the Armenian Heritage Park, um, the one with the no irrigation, so it's got the scrub grass lawn and um, that long arced um, uh, black chain link fence. Um, a group that has done um, uh, photo installations on fences um, in New York is proposing to do one in partnership with the Flash Forward Festival. The Flash Forward Festival, um, they have uh, they've been in Boston a couple of times um, out of the Fairmont Battery Wharf. Um, they had a small installation on the Greenway last year. They are proposing to put kind of a new screen <coughs> along that fence and a series of images. Um, we're working with mass dots, since that fence is really a, sort of a ramp fence, but should take what is um, an unfortunate kind of eyesore and turn it into something that's 
much more enjoyable for passers by. Um, on uh, food vending, um, a couple of things there. Uh, we, at the corner of um, Parcel 8, the southwest corner at Hanover Street, across from uh, Haymarket, um, we've had vendors there in the past. We, um, just this past Friday, um, the Clover Food Truck began, and they're going to operate. And we, we provided an update on this before, but now it's begun. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, enjoy a, a Clover sandwich. Um, and we also heard um, the Kick-Ass Cupcakes truck was also going to be there, and has done a few days there. Um, we heard some concerns um, that with a nearby cupcake shop, Lulu's, that um, this perhaps wasn't the right fit, so we worked with Kick-Ass to move them somewhere else. So thank you for your input. Um, they won't be located there. If you want a cupcake, go to Lulu's. Uh, but if you want a Kick-Ass Cupcake, walk a little further. Um, then uh, on events, um, last season on the Greenway, there were um, 350 free events. Um, and we look forward to another really busy season on the Greenway, but just want to encourage all of you, um, if you have event proposals, we really are in the business of hosting events. We have a great space. We're happy to help you um, find the right space, whether it's in the North End Parks or whether it gets somewhere else, the Wharf District, Louis Square, wherever. Um, we'd love to hear your ideas. Um, and we're doing specific outreach to try and encourage those proposals. So for example, um, Amy and I are going to meet with um, the new executive director from um, NEMPAC to talk about partnership and what ideas um, people have. So please, if you've got uh, event ideas, um, bring them forward. We'd love to, love to host. Um, and then uh, just a very small little pitch at the end, which is um, Mother's Day is not that far away. And um, there is the Mother's Walk on the Greenway. So if you are looking for, or if you want to encourage someone who might buy you a Mother's Day present, um, the, uh, the Mother's Walk on the Greenway, the papers there, help support the operations of the park. So consider that as a possibility for, um, for Mother's Day, or really any holiday that you might want to give to um, that was what I had, but uh, happy to take any questions as well. <coughs> so, you know, like typically, I, we do. Uh, we'll take questions from anyone on the council, and then uh, obviously we'll open to um, the residents or so, um, guests. Does anyone have a question? I, I have a question. Sure, sure. Yeah. The uh, press for the North End Parks did some fun things last year. Yeah. Uh, of uh, that deal. Mm -hmm. When and when should we see blossoms from that come out? Uh, it's, uh, you're testing my horticultural knowledge. Yeah, sure, yeah. um, springtime, um, but I think you probably want something more specific than that because you probably know springtime. Uh, I can find out and pass the word back to John or pass the word to Stephen. Um, in, you know, it, it certainly is weather dependent, but if you had somebody that knew a bit more about horticulture than me, they probably could tell you a better window than what spring. And are you guys still working with that group? Yeah, um, yeah, we've uh, we had a number of meetings with them. Um, it's an ongoing dialogue, it's a great partnership to plant. For those that, that don't know, um, about 10,000 daffodil bulbs. Um, they will be coming out this spring. Um, eight uh, details to, to follow. <coughs> But the, the, the trees you're going to plant, are they going to be evenly distributed, like one on parcel? You know, there's two really parcels in the north. Right. One. Um, I believe that it is. Um, Four to five maples on, I believe, parcel eight on the west side of the lawn. Okay. I have to confirm that. And then um, an elm, it will go on parcel 10. Um, the, you know, the, the elm that is on parcel eight in the northeast corner is the largest tree on the greenway. Um, we are looking to plant, it won't be as large a tree, because that's not the best way to plant them, but we're looking to plant a kind of complementary elm at the southwest corner of parcel eight. So I believe it's a little bit distributed, but I think that the um, maples are on parcel eight. Are you, are you going to um, plant small trees that will mature over time, or is it going to come in? Because that maple when they got planted was a pretty big tree when they planted it, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, um, the interesting thing I learned, no, I learned this is apparently, um, if you plant them larger, they actually grow slower. Okay. They, they have learned, um, I don't know how to call it, but they've learned their growth pattern right. somewhere else. And that you actually, um, that elm will, that it, it is currently the largest tree on the Greenway, will ultimately be surpassed by others. And so the intention for the, the complementary elm is planted a bit larger than you, know, you might plant uh, a street tree, 
so that it doesn't look out of scale the things that are out there, but certainly not nearly as large as the elements there, so that it really can thrive. And are they going to scatter them, or are they going to be like cluttered together? Um, the the maples that are going in, I think, will really be. Um, uh, you know, I shouldn't get the specifics of this because I don't know the exact plan, but I believe that since um, it's west side of the lawn, that they won't be in clusters as much as they'll be drawn out. So the reason I'm asking is that I know a lot of kids go up there and play frisbee and all yeah. this. No, that absolutely. We will be keeping, um, regardless of the specific layout, the overall message is absolutely the, the open feel of the lawn will be entirely retained, despite the condition of these trees. The tend to sort of balance between those who want to play frisbee and those who want to sunbathe and those that want um, to capture some shade. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Dan Toscano. Put on my YouTube hat. And, uh, I represent <coughs> the uh, sweet shop. And to my immediate left is Sandy Russo, the owner and operator of uh, uh, Lulu Sweet Shop. So we thank you for the consideration and moving kick ass cupcakes along because it really is a good business. But the question is how does the Greenway choose the vendors? And do you take into consideration our, our local neighborhood? Uh, businesses uh, that are here and what location a certain friend they will have. Yes, absolutely. So um, we accept proposals. Um, so that's, I mean, that's the first thing is we often hear input of like, you know, I'd like a barbecue truck. If nobody proposes a barbecue truck, we can't give you one. Um, but then the proposals that we get, um, we do interviews and we talk to them. We have a, an advisory panel um, that includes some of the mayor's office, includes um, Board members of ours, um, for example, James Chan, who works with um, Professor Linehan and in the China um, community, he um, has served for several years as sort of an advisor on this. Um, and we absolutely take um, what is nearby into consideration. And um, so uh, either we drop the ball on this one, or you know, it's. Um, Lulu's was at a distance and the hope was that um, at two days a week for a few hours <coughs> they would not be an issue. But this is why we both did sort of outreach ahead of time on this is what we were planning. And with this feedback, um, we're, we're happy to change it because we really want it to be something that is a complement to what's nearby rather than a competition to what's nearby. Is there an opportunity in the future when is there be a proposal, especially from, say, North Bend area and North Street down to the end of Cox Street and we're going to have this uh, Take the proposals, maybe bring them before the neighborhood council and say, hey, we have a number of vendors, here's what we, we have, and maybe have the, a neighborhood meeting on it or put it on the agenda so maybe the neighborhood council and residents can come and say, if, for example, if you had some barbecue, maybe the neighborhood may not want it, I'm not sure, but um, it, that might be an idea. I appreciate that. We've, um, we're entering our fourth year, and um, this is the first time. Um, in those four years where we've had sort of mismatch this, And so I'm sorry that it was you. Um, and I'm glad that we could you know, hear your feedback. We actually, um, uh, we have tried to keep an open dialogue for exactly this reason. And for example, at the Rings Fountain, in Macambolio across the street, we've never put um, ice cream right there because it was so, it was on the one hand obvious ice cream at the Rings Fountain would be a natural, on the other hand, it's just 50 steps from Immaculate. So we try to be, and actually now, um, the owner of Immaculate runs the um, ice cream bike that's on the Greenway. He looked out, saw the opportunity. Um, so if you'd like to get cupcakes on the Greenway um, next year. Um, so um, you know, we, please, if you, if you have feedback um, on the Clover truck that's out there, they are probably the, the most beloved food truck in Boston. Um, but uh, you know, everybody has everybody has their own opinion. So send the feedback we love to hear. Anyone else? Because I'm gonna move forward the the agenda and really got to the anyone else quick? Alright, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Um,